There we go. We're live. Hey guys. What's so going on? So excited to draw. Who's hanging at home today? A lot of people working from home. A lot of kids hanging at home. Yep. So excited to... Uh, we, we, Ange and I cut our... Um, we were in Florida. And we uh, kind of cut our vacation short and got back to Massachusetts. Um, so I was going to be drawing anyway, just kind of for myself... And I thought, well, geez, maybe I could I could draw with you guys, and we can all kind of hang out together. I might I might just go ahead and draw every day this week. We'll right. see how it goes. So here we are. We're down in Tony's studio. Yep. We're gonna do some drawing. Yeah. I'm here to um, facilitate any questions that you have that you would like me to share with Tony, uh, and he can answer your questions. I'm here to just doodle. Doodle. I, you know, we've been work. I, you know, I was gonna. Vacation's imp important for for us to recharge and spend time together as family. Obviously, a lot of us are spending time together as family. We work at home all the time, um, and I um, haven't drawn today. This is my uh, first. This is uh, we had a lot of. I did a lot of bunch of other stuff, taking care of emails and things like that, but. Um, so this is like going to be my warm up day, I think, Angela, or at least for this Facebook Live, I'm going to do some warm up sketches. Um, if you followed me before, you know I love my comfort food is to go back and draw stuff I drew uh, way back when, thirty years ago for Dungeons and Dragons. I love drawing those fantasy characters and stuff, and you can see I'm kind of drawing a kind of a slouchy caveman-y looking shape, and I'm kind of building it up. I'm going to start with this, Ange. This kind of ogre-y looking guy. And then I think we should just do requests and just see what people want want uh, want to see me draw. Absolutely. And I think that just keep it more fun and interesting as I try to warm my brain up yeah. and get ready. So the thing is for us, I know a lot of people are frustrated. They're home from school. They're home from work. But we work at home every day. So we're, you know, Tony's drawing and coming up with stories. And I'm doing the same without the drawing part. Um, and so for us, this is just like our, our regular time to kind of be creative and do our work. Um, and so we thought we would just come on to hopefully inspire you a little bit, maybe give you something to do, or if you're an artist or a writer yourself, maybe you just need a little extra, uh, inspiration. I, uh, when we tried to do it early enough so that some of our friends in Europe, especially our friends in Italy, would uh, be able to catch us before it's too late. Uh, we have the, a friend from Italy right now, Ariana. Uh -huh. Oh, fantastic. Salute dell'Italia. <laughs> I'm not even going to try that. Ciao, Ariana. Cha I can do ciao. That's, that's <laughs> it. Otherwise, it's going to sound her terrible. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm drawing like an ogre-y guy, like just a kind of a classic... Dungeons and Dragons ogre. We've fought a couple of these. Um, or no, you guys have befriended an ogre. Aw, who's calling? Is it a solicitor? No, it's not. Oh, it's our neighbor. I'll let you hang here. I, I offered to go to the store for her if she needs it. Oh, okay. All right, and I will try to... Uh, I will try to answer questions why I am sketching, but without Ange here to moderate. Uh, it's a little tricky business. Anyway, um... Nassim says, draw the lady of pain. It suits the world situation right now. Jeez, uh, it is kind of a crazy time. I have found or have thought, I, there, there's certainly been times throughout this, as I've watched the news over the last couple of weeks, where I felt like it almost felt like 9-11 um, like uh, when Angela and I were living in New York City, that kind of, that kind of feeling of helplessness. Uh, certainly, um, someone like like me, where all I do is draw pictures of goblins and fairies all day for a living. Um, but I have found that, for me at least, um, drawing and expressing myself um, has helped um, alleviate some of that anxiety and that stress. And I think whether um, you're very good at drawing or painting or not, it doesn't really matter. I think... Um, for me, putting on like my favorite music and, and sketching and drawing is something I've been doing since I was very young. 
and uh, maybe you're writing uh, poetry or you um, you play an instrument and you, you're writing a song or, or any. There's so many ways that we can kind of express what we're feeling. And, and for me, this kind of drawing, um, it doesn't necessarily help me make sense of the situation, but I can process stuff and, and maybe in understanding that I can't make sense of everything, that's okay too. It's, um, and that in time, maybe it will make more sense. I don't know. I don't have any. I don't have any real words of <laughs> of wisdom. I. It's just um, kind of where I've been lately when I think about all these things. When I read the news and and uh, you know shake it off to go write a story about a rabbit and a dragon or draw Dungeons and Dragons and things like that. So uh, maybe I'll do a drawing of the Lady of Pain. She's, she's uh, not easy to draw, but um, that would be kind of fun. Um, and Jeff Smith thinks I should um, put Mickey Mouse ears on. He has, look at the size of these ears, Jeff Smith. They're almost Mickey Mouse-like. Um, however, maybe um, we can put a tiny helmet on him. I'm actually referring to off-screen is this old... Monster Manual, I illustrated this um, way back in, in the early 1990s. This is my personal copy. It's a little beat up. I did draw um, this ogre, and I love um, kind of returning to these drawings and just kind of using them as a little warm-up. So this guy's pretty classic, standard ogre guy. Um, if you're just joining us, I, I haven't drawn yet this morning. I had to take care of some mail and some grown-up stuff, which is... Uh, never my favorite thing to do, but so I'm finally getting a chance to kind of sit and sketch today. So I thought I would do kind of these warm up sketches and then, um, you know, we'll just draw, hang out and draw and talk and we can talk or not talk. <laughs> Angie's uh, upstairs on a phone call, but she'll be down momentarily to, uh, help field questions while I'm sketching here. Um... Let's see what we have here. I'll try to look at uh, Jeff Smith says second edition was the best edition. Thank you. I, I think every edition is is uh, has its own merits, I suppose, and each generation kind of has their own edition that they like. I like the older editions because that's what I grew up with, and I, certainly I love second edition because I got to help contribute to the second edition. Um, Aaron wants to know, what's a good way to get myself out of writer or drawing block um, that's a great question. I get that a lot. I, Aaron, you're not going to like my answer. I don't really have writer's block or drawing block. I, I can always find something to, to draw or write about. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly thinking of ideas for stories and stuff. And I think for me, one of the things I do is I always keep a little notebook to, to grab ideas. Because I, I can't tell you how many times I've been in the car and, and an idea has floated into my brain, and I'm like, oh, I'll remember that when I get home. And then by the time I get home, I've completely and totally forgotten what it was. So I oftentimes I'll either pull over and, and put it in my phone or write it down on a piece of paper so I can remember it and then return to it later. And that'll often spark and get my brain going. Um, I've been, you know, I, I make books for a living, so I often look to books for inspiration and uh in fact maybe we'll do a live session maybe tomorrow or later in the week and i'll pull out some of my favorite books that i've gotten that always give me such inspiration but it is a moving target for me because i'll get really excited about an artist or a writer and i'll devour a bunch of things um that they've created and then i get excited about something else they usually lead me to someone else or something else and then i um move on. So for instance, I went through, um, <laughs> I have this over the winter. I, um, was, I just had this craving for cr classic Stephen King. And I went back and listened on audiobook while I was drawing, um, some, I listened to uh, pet cemetery and I listened to the shining. And these were books that I hadn't read probably since I was in middle school. So it was, it was really, um, nice to get, back into 
such a Stephen King, like in, at the beginning of his career when he was such an, um, I mean, he's still an amazing writer, but for me, that was like that first blush when I first became really excited about his, his stories. So uh, there's all kinds of ways that I can get myself out of um, block and, and get inspired, but it doesn't, it's usually, for me, it's kind of clearing my schedule and clearing my mind so I can create. This is, this, what I'm doing right now is absolutely part of it. A drawing that has nothing to do with anything that I have to do for work. And that's why you guys probably see so many of these little Dungeons and Dragons or fantasy drawings that I do. Um, they, 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 they're not for anyone but for myself. I love um, doing them. Um, I'm trying to collect them all into a sketchbook. I think that's going to happen finally. I've been working on that for, for years. Um, and so, um, that, you know, kind of shutting off the thinking part of my brain and just kind of drawing for the fun of it. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm really just kind of babbling and just, just sketching and not really thinking too hard, but just to get my eye hand coordination going is always really good. And sometimes good stuff comes out of it. Hey guys, I'm back. And just back. I'm back. That She'll be our neighbor. We have an elderly neighbor who... I had spoken with her to let her know if she needs anything. We're happy to help out. Oh, good. So she's doing good. Good to hear. Hopefully you guys are all safe and healthy that are tuning in. And uh, we'll, we'll all uh, get, to, get to the other side of this and go, wow, that was, that was a crazy time. Yeah. I'm just doing some more warm-up. I've, I've taken a couple of... of of questions, Ange, but I'm mostly just kind of doodling and and okay, babbling, and getting my eye-hand coordination Pull back. Pull my page back up here. Let's see. Oh, I've got quite a few comments. Hey, everybody. Um, let's see. What do we got here? Dun, 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 dun. So a lot of times I do, I mean, I did a three-quarter, which is actually... Um, a little bold for me usually going out. I usually do a head-on or a side view if I don't know what the character looks like. So you can see here I'm kind of, it's almost like doing the math problem and doing all the um, equation on the side. I'm kind of just kind of playing around here with what a side view could look like. I saw, I, I like this kind of old man mouth, like makes him look older here. So I'm kind of exploring that a little more on this side. And this very, this almost lack of forehead makes him look more, uh, Neanderthal, mm -hmm. more, more, uh, I don't want to say dim-witted, but not, you know, he, mm -hmm. he leads Oofy. with his, he's a little oafy. He's a little oafy. Yeah. He's a little oafy. He leads with his club, Ange. Oh yeah. We've got one of those in our Dungeons and Dragons party for sure. Oh, okay. Okay. Now I can pull this up so I can see what people's questions are. That sounds good. If you could have tea, Tony, Adeline. Martin asks, if you could have tea with three artists, dead or alive, whom would you choose? Wow. That's a great uh, question. I mean, I think I've been fortunate enough to have uh, uh, coffee and, and, and beer with Brian Froud, who was certainly a tremendous influence on me uh, growing up, especially his book, Fairies. I don't think that's any surprise. There's Created one. all the designs for the Dark Crystal. Labyrinth. Labyrinth. And, uh, and so by extension, I would say definitely Jim Henson was someone that was so incredibly um, impactful on me. His, and it wasn't really what Jim Henson drew. It was what the world that he created. That's the thing that like just set my imagination on fire, this totally felt and fleece puppet world was just so cool. And then when he took it to the next level with the Dark Crystal and Labyrinth, it was it was just unbelievable. Jim Henson. Jim Henson, Brian Froud, and obviously by extension, I I, I would have loved to have been able to have met the the, the great Arthur Rackham. Um he was a turn of the century illustrator, uh turn of the last century, nineteenth century, going into the twentieth century. And um and I, you know, if you don't know his work, many our illustrators do, um, but it, a lot of other people may not. He, you know, Rackham did a lot of classic English fairy tales during a period we call the golden age of children's books. This is when there were gift editions of 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 of, of classic 
children's books made that were handed down for generations. They were beautifully done. They, they were these amazing books. And here's the thing, Angela, I think when I think about Rackham now, you know, that gift book existed. If, if you're familiar with Kickstarter, it's almost like Kickstarter. He would do, he would do a uh, trade edition of books or so traditional hardcover version of the book. Then he would do this fancy pants, um, large size version of the book that was signed and numbered. And then he would do an exhibition and sell all the artwork at the launch of the book, which is, this is like the late 18, you know, late 1800s, early 1900s. He's doing this. And um, that's pretty, it's pretty neat that he was doing all that way back then. Like he was that much of an entrepreneur. Um, okay, look, I, I, here's another, I'm gonna do one more warm up, and then we'll take, we'll take quests, requests. I loved these guys and Dungeons and Dragons, the Myconid, the fungus, the, I love the, he's a fungus man, yeah. oh, he, yeah. oh yeah, he can dance, he's a fungus man, he's a fungus man, <laughs> I love that, Fun- fungus among us, I really just drew a mushroom with arms and, and eyes, but no mouth, <laughs> so I'm gonna just see if I can do a better fungus man now do you need a mushroom from the kitchen i kind of feel like i need a mushroom do you know where my field guides all my little field guides are on the shelf there's one for north american funguses because of course there is and uh so you know the obvious is you know this but i feel like this is a place where uh reference is going to just give me some amazing it's a little square it's going to be one of those little pocket ones Ange. No, go down one shelf right there. The, okay. the narrow shelf. Up, no. up to, up to, right there. Okay. And then to, far to the, yep, keep going to the, yep. You're going to see one. Now you guys are going to sound like we have a dog, uh, dog fight going on. That is our dogs every afternoon. They play in the studio because it has the most room. And, um, oh, I see it. I see it. She did it. So you'll hear squeaking. Every day. I used to hate it. I'm not going to lie. I'd be sitting here concentrating, listening to my Steely Dan, and, and, you know, they're interrupting my 70s vibe while I'm trying to concentrate, but now I've grown to love it. So look, already, like, look at this, Ange. Here's, you know, here's me, like, drawing, like, a toadstool, and on the cover so of the drew book. This. You I drew this that. back in 1992, 1993, almost, you know, almost 30 years ago, and look at just the book cover already has a more interesting mushroom yeah, than this lame guy that I've drawn. <laughs> I haven't that. even opened the book yet. And so this this is super key like to Spiderwick. I would be like, you know, how would I how would I come up with a character? This is it. I would flip through and look at this kind of stuff and it would get my brain going. You know, these weird little shapes, the textures, the purple guy, a cluster of them. I just want to put googly eyes on them. Yeah. <laughs> that way. Oh, you know what? You know what? They, you know what they might have? This might be kind of cool. I think when they get. I've what if it's a puffball? No, you don't have puffballs in the fridge. <laughs> Look at that weird shaggy mane. Like that's where you start getting. That's just creepy. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That's cool. Those are cool. That's looks like an organ. <laughs> that's oh, pretty. Yeah, that's like a. I've seen those. That's pretty amazing. I'm gonna go with a puffball, Ange. Okay, that's fun. I though. think that's the idea of a mushroom myconid puffball man is that way looks cooler. Like a little family. The, <laughs> they're just they can't wait because their alignment is well. Their alignment's lawful neutral. Well, neutral. I was they're neutral. Say those are neutral. They're not gonna hurt you. No. You you might actually be able to befriend are one. Are they poisonous? Depends on. They do. They what? do release. They have poison skin and they yeah. release spore clouds. I once. I've never come across. We've been playing our D and D group now for two years with this group, and we have never come across fungus man. Oh, maybe there's a reason why I'm drawing these things. Oh, what? Or, mm, or is there? Mind. Just did that. Dave uh, Peterson has a question. Dave Peterson, he is. I guarantee you, without even looking at what it is, his question is: You owe me a phone call. When are you, <laughs> you going to call? Uh, Would you two want to work on a book project together? Something Angelo writes and T illustrates. So, is this, I mean, I, have you talked to him lately? Have, have you told him something? To him. Does I've he not know? Spoken to him, he knows nothing. He knows nothing, but he but yet knows everything. Um, Angela and I have. Well, first of all, I think it it it's it's it bears mentioning. 
Angie, you've been with me. You've suffered me now for... 27 years. Yes. And so she has helped me on so many things. I mean, early on, I would just show her stuff and she, you would give me your feedback. And then from writing my books, uh, she's always read them and offered input. So there's so many times, uh, certainly something like The Broken Ornament. I mean, you rewrote chunks of that to help me with it because I'm so lousy at writing um, um, picture books. However, all that said, I think he has snail eyes. I th- Ooh, like, wouldn't that be cool? And they like, maybe they go in and out, like it can f- retract them. Oh, I like it. These look more like crab's eyes, like they have that thing, like a, when you see a crab. <laughs> I want to do, remember the Muppet Menomina? I know, the, I, that's what I just yip, saw, yip, like yip, a Muppet. Uh-huh, uh-huh, has mm-hmm. this like kind of weird Muppet mouth. Anyway. All that, and and I've looked over Angie's books and helped her when I could. I've consulted with some of the illustrators that have have worked on her books. And when, <coughs> excuse me, it's not Corona. Oh gosh, it's just choking on my own spit oh, while I'm God. talking. Um, that said, we have been slowly working on a very old manuscript. Angela dusted it off and really brought it to an amazing place. And, um, oh, thanks, honey. And, uh, but you knew that already. And I'll be, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty working good. on it now. I'm doing some sketches for it now. And, and all will be revealed soon, Dave Peterson. I, I assure you. But I really wanted, that's you the know, first question that everybody asks. They're like, oh, do you guys team up? But in so many ways, we do because we do. we're constantly looking at everything oh, the yeah. other is, is, is doing. We, we, even the things that don't have both of our names on it, like we're touching. Yes. For sure. But look, can I also say, and I, I want to, I don't want it, I want to keep it real. There are times I will be down here sketching for either hours or days on something and you will come down and go, I go, what do you think? And you go, that eye's wrong. And I will completely go, I'll either get super defensive or I'll, or I'll be like, no, it's not. I'll, or I'll, So it, it's, I need People like Angela, who are completely straight up with me, and Scott Fisher comes to mind. He's always been a straight shooter with my art. Steve Berman, who has been a beta reader on almost all my books, comes to mind. Um, but that that criticism sometimes is not always easy for me to hear. Well, and you're so close to it. I mean, you know, drawing and writing. It... <laughs> Why do I love this guy more and more? As I a... love him. He's... He looks like he's from Pikmin. He does look like a... Well, he'd have a thing like that yeah. if he was a Pikmin, but yeah, um, there's something about him. No, those him. things that eat you, like the kind of froggy mouth ones that eat all the Pikmin. Yeah. So here's what I'm thinking. Like, so here's the, the shape language, right? The, the thing that this thing operates, it's not quite a circle. It's kind of a uh, this kind of cone, like an ice cream cone. And then it has this kind of almost an invert of that, right? That's kind of the... So maybe I need to try to... I can contrast it with skinny things, right? Or I can try to incorporate these other, these roundy shapes into it. Let me show you what I mean. Like, so maybe the legs are more like this, like a Stay Puff Marshmallow. You see that, Ange? Mm-hmm. So there's like different ways of problem solving. I feel like this, you have kind of froggy legs. This character's, I feel that way too. And so frog legs. I feel like you don't want him to just look like a little guy in a suit, right? <laughs> <laughs> like he's ready to fight Godzilla. There's a, there's a tiny city behind him that's getting destroyed and it's on fire that's okay no that's no good um but it's that, what i was gonna say is like it is like a choose your own adventure like you're just being like yeah this sounds good let me try this let me flip to this page and see if it works oh it doesn't work let me flip back you know you're creating something from your imagination you're creating oh, I like this. i'm going back to the original I like arms that. You're doing long, long arms, arms. yes with weird, does this show? I wonder what the roots of a. They don't really have roots, do they? But I feel like it's called a gem studded puff ball. Oh, this that's guy. That's amazing. This and you guys wonder how I came up with the names for the Spiderway characters. It wasn't that hard. He Once needs to... big beefy arms. Some James Shade said. Yeah, but James Shade now look at these are the knuckle don't, draggers. I don't know if they're knuckle draggers. Mm-hmm. Don't let their his Popeye arms fool you. He's very froggy. He's going he kind, of kind of frog Yeah, but if I think of a mushroom, certainly a gem-studded puffball was... It, they are kind of froggy. Okay. 
We got any other questions, Ange? I'm going to keep drawing this. I'm kind yeah, of feeling... Yeah, they do have kind of thread-like roots, right? I feel like that's Marshall what is... Marshall Nick said. Thank you, Marshall. I'm thinking that's the what the... The mycelium of the main body of the fungus that dwells in the soil or an old log. See, like, I think that's what all... I think that's what, what we would call toes. They're all, like... So they wouldn't even be consistent. They would be these... Yeah, not hands. They're just... They just end in... Tendrils. Tendrils that they can, that they can use, though. The um, this reminds me a little bit of the um, oh I can't believe I can't remember the name the 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 plant animal creatures in the th final Wandla book were kind of like this they were they were based off a of lichen remember Ange mm -hmm. and they spoke through puffs of color mm -hmm. which is kind of puffballish mm. you're like yeah <laughs> that sounds mm, weird he needs a jaunty hat don't Very we all. Hey, Travis Lewis. Oh, maybe my third eye? Making cool stuff. Hey, Travis. Hope you're doing well. Multiple eyes. Multiple eyes. There's something about that. It gets more Muppety. <laughs> <laughs> well, you pick well it especially if I do this mm -hmm. and then do this. <laughs> and they got, always had that weird... Hi, hi, oh, Herbity Frog. You're when I was a kid, I called that the ganglia. I know that's not what it is, that's, but... Isn't, that's not what it's called? I don't think so. <laughs> I always called it that too, but the ganglia. It's got a ganglia. After. I think it's got a huge mouth. And in D and D land, I don't know if I would get it angry. I also feel like the cool thing about this is like it would be camouflaged, right? So you wouldn't even see the body. It, it would, would rise like, up. It would rise yeah, it would up. rise up. And in fact, you would have. And and maybe it's in such a way where there's others around I it. You're drawing it farting. Well, it, no, it farts spores. It'd yeah, be spores. like this. Poisonous spores. They'd come out of it like this. And you'd be like, <laughs> and then you'd roll saving throw, mm -hmm. and that would be that. And then mm. with its Muppet mouth, it would it would eat you. Oh gosh! Does and it you wear have clothes? To roll your okay, so here's always the thing I do, right? So let's 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 look at its let's look at its statistics. Yeah. Its intelligence is average. Well, I have average intelligence. I wear pants. I wear clothes. Does it wear clothes? No. But why? Wow, it's got a really long entry. <laughs> this is a lot more than maybe you need to know. I don't know. It oh powders of hallucination. Wait. Potion of fungus growth. It lives for twenty four years. Wait, the myconid king is the largest member of the colony. Oh, oh a king. six hit die. They fight by clubbing their clasped hands. So they you <laughs> so the, if you're clubbing with your hands, then I've drawn the clubbing. hands. You mean like <laughs> definitely with a glow stick, preferably. Um, okay, maybe no clothes. It says it resembles a walking toadstool in human form. Yeah, because the flesh is bloated and spongy. Ooh. That sounds like me. <laughs> and varies in color from purple to gray. Also me. Their wide feet have vestigial toes and pudgy hands and two stubby fingers. Okay. Question. Jason Martin wants to know, how does that old pink eraser erase so well? <laughs> this thing? I always use the white ones because my pink erasers get dry and start to smudge. Oh, well, I go through them so fast. Like, this one's almost done. See, I'm wearing a hole through it. Once that's, then it, then it gets the little flap top. I literally use the same stuff I've used since I was a kid. I buy it in bulk at Staples. Number I, two, Ticonderoga. Number two, Ticonderoga. I'm using um, Staples, <laughs> like, laser paper. I get the 32 pound. It's pretty heavy. It's pretty good stuff. I can trace on it. It, it accepts the lead wonderfully it smears and smudges which i love and uh, i know many of my friends have, have gone digital and i've seen some amazing things i still love this i still love this process i know it can be done on digitally but there's something about this that still brings me so much joy trippy shroom dude it is a very trippy <laughs> shroom dude if i put a cat in a hat hat on it mm -hmm. it would take it to a whole mm -hmm. another level odd number of eyes if i had to draw this for a thing, I wouldn't give it even. I would give it odd. I think that makes it more interesting. Odd's important, I feel like. Odd's important. Now here, when you use, and I feel like odd is always important. Like if if you use descriptors and text, I often go with odd. But yeah. Odd is just seems to fit right. You feels know, feels like, more natural. Feels less calculated. Yeah. If you if you bunch things up or organize things, decorate things in your house, an odd number is always the way to go. Like. Yeah. There you go. So Although we only have two dogs. Well. No, I mean, it's going to stay that way, but. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, but I, we have a kid. I, That's an odd number of. 
That's of humans. That's good. <laughs> and with the dogs, that makes five. I really like this guy, Angie. I'm going to now take this. This is totally how I work. If you guys want to know when I'm doing my morning doodle, like I kind of really like what this guy's doing. Now I'm going to, uh, or what this guy looks like. Now I'm going to draw him doing something. I don't know what he's doing yet, but I'm going to draw him doing it. Like I said, we can, we can have an odd, one is an odd number. We can go back to one. Okay, so I'm going to do a little... <laughs> Dean Doggo said, need more dogs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll send them your way. Um, so now I'm drawing, I'm just drawing it doing, like, I'm literally just like, you know, how does it walk? Are they male or female? Like, there's a king. Is that saying that it's There's a queen? Male I don't know. It's weird. I would think there'd be nothing. I, I did. would be some more of this. Let me get on this. Really? You think this is what they tuned in Facebook Live for? They want to know what we think about the myconid, the fungus man? Huh. It can emit each of its spores, spore types, a number of times per day, equal to the hit die. That's a lot of spores. Powders of hallucination. Oh. Potion of fungus growth. Oh, so you need it for, as a element. Oh. oh, interesting. I'm really playing into the Muppet. This actually brings up a thing that I think um, I dealt with when I illustrated D&D many years ago, and people have asked me many times about D&D today, which is my kind of Muppety, kids' book, animated, Don Bluthy version of Dungeons & Dragons. It's not, when you look at Dungeons & Dragons, especially the Art in 5th Edition, it's beautifully rendered, but it's very, um, reminds me of like a video game or concept art for a live action movie. And I think that's great. I mean, it's a game that can be skinned in a variety of ways. But for me, this is always, I've always wanted that kind of dark crystal labyrinth, Alice in Wonderland kind of world or, or the old original Rankin and Bass Hobbit. That's always how I envisioned it because those are the things I remember growing up when I was first introduced to fantasy. Yeah, because, so. well, I think you grew up playing Dungeons and Dragons. So, you know, the characters are one thing, but like the creatures are so much cooler. I think both. I mean, I think I think it's it's all those things, but I also just think that it's it, I don't when I look at the new stuff, I would just be so scared to live in that world. <laughs> <laughs> what the new D&D looks like just looks it looks too real for me and the real world is is already anxiety inducing enough. I want kind of a little bit of a It's usually always dark with like fire. Every, dude, everything is pumped. If you yeah. look at the Monster Manual, everybody has been hitting the gym, even the blobby. The, I guarantee you the mushroom guy in the fifth edition is totally like like this. That's just weird. He's like, dude, I've been working it. <laughs> I, got I, got a, I got the little six pack and the ribs, man. I've been rocking. He would be totally like. He's like, yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, well, mushroom, it, mushroom Planet Fitness. Yeah, I mean, I to each their own, but I've always pictured things more uh, shaped like me, which is like that giant head, flabby uh, joints. So this is what you usually do. I feel like you start sketching, you design the characters, and, I, and then you're like, what are they going to do? What's it doing? I don't know enough about a mushroom man to know what it would do. I would say that's it's clubbing. I mean, golly, it just it wants to club. Eat something. Oh. It releases a spore cloud. I feel like if it's a sp releasing a spore cloud, it's literally doing this. I don't even know if I could, like, I, it's literally like this. Camouflaging or releasing spore. Oh, oh it's like this. It's like, sp you know, engage spore cloud. Like, like the spores could what? shoot out of its head. What else do you get? Well, I just want to see T draw. <laughs> if, we, if we run this one down the, the yes. mushroom i love this guy though i want to i definitely want to take him and draw him doing i gotta just read and i'm not going to read on facebook live for you guys there's there's more boring you guys are bored enough because i i would i think that that is a big thing like i always look on instagram and i always looking for new artists and i think there's so much cool character design and but, but when it comes to actually illustrating a book, what's it, it is about, like, what are they doing? What is it doing? 
how is it acting? Like, what is the scene that you're illustrating? And that's a big part of what you're doing as an illustrator is you're reading all that text and you're building a story with the information that you have to make it more real and illustrate a scene that it's in. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm reading the book. Oh, combat. They club. They have sp sp uh, spew forth. Like, if I had to illustrate this for the Monster Manual, I would show them doing whatever their special thing is that they do. So it would be releasing the spores and, you know, the, the, what's more exciting than drawing a mushroom or releasing spores? All right, let's move on. Hey, does anybody have it? something they want me to draw? I can move out of D&D &D and back into kids' book land, too, actually. It doesn't have to just be uh, fantasy stuff. Yeah, if you guys have anything in particular that you're like, ooh, um, there's some, there's, ooh. <laughs> I would legit just put this on a channel all day long. It's wonderful. Don't worry about boring us. Okay, good. I'm <laughs> glad to hear it. I think I might do it all week. We're going to see because, I again, I we my week was going to be, you know, going to the beach and collecting shells with... Hanging with, in Florida. Hanging in Florida. So I'm back home and uh, I can do this. So, Andrew, I'm drawing just to kind of mix it up. Something. I'm drawing... Something from Spiderwick. Something from Spiderwick? I could draw something from Spiderwick. I was drawing Kenny. Turtle character. Turtle character. <laughs> um, let's see. How do you um, decide, this is my question to you, how do you decide what your warm-up is going to be usually? Because this is what you do. Basically, this is what your warm-up would be, right? You yeah. You either sit down here or you would sit upstairs at the kitchen table yeah. and you would just draw to warm up for whatever the I'm, job is that you're working on at the time. Yeah, usually it's impulse. I usually don't think about it too hard, Angie. I really don't. Like, I don't go to bed at night going, tomorrow I'm going to do it. Like, sometimes, when I did Inktober, I definitely was trying to think a couple of drawings ahead. So I didn't, you know, if I needed a day off or whatever. Um, but for... A flower-inspired fairy. A flower-inspired fairy. I can do that. A dragonborn fighter. I'm not even sure what that means. Is that a fighter that's a dragon? Mm. Born of dragons? Um, do you always do a warm-up? Always. This is all, like, I've, so much of this. So here's the other stage. So then, like, tomorrow the warm-up, maybe take this guy, trace him onto a piece of paper, and then ink him. Yeah, that would be the next thing. Maybe that would be the thing. Is Just we'll do a little more. So the next uh, level. Uh, the fairies of, um, do you need flower fairies. You know, I do and I don't. I mean... A new flower would be interesting, but I can just I can just if you, if you need reference, yeah. let me know. Uh, I, I, I can get your book. So, the spiderwick fairies and the way I draw fairies in general was um, was inspired by a number of fairy artists, but most uh, particularly it was a man named um, <laughs> I was going to say F. Scott Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. But it's, his last name is Fitzgerald. He was a fairy artist during the Victorian era. And he did all these amazing things with like seed pods and, and, um, and flower petals for his fairies. And he was just an amazing fairy uh, illustrator. And we got to see a couple of his original paintings when we were in London. So crazy. And so tiny. They're so tiny. They're just beautiful little tiny oil paintings. They're jewels. They're amazing, elaborate um, frames. And he was such a... I mean, Brian Froud got me into fairy art along with Alan Lee and, and certainly Arthur Rackham. But this guy, like, really showed me something that I hadn't thought of and seen. And it made it kind of synchronized with what I think of fairy in the fairy world, which is that they are the embodiment of the spirits of nature. That's, that's totally what I believe and feel. And uh, anyway, sometimes I will do this where I start to draw the face and I kind of... We'll just start doing symmetrical shapes and lines to just see what what comes. So this this process can go. Oh, the dogs are gonna go nuts now. Of course they're they are. They're gonna run around like maniacs. No, they're just kind of chilling. Um, just I'm curious. So that structure that you're doing of the basic head shape is that something that you learn? Like, do you learn that in life drawing, or is that just a this head when I did yeah, this, like yeah, that's, that. yeah, I would have learned that in life drawing, and then I and is then just. Is there a rule for where the eyes go? And in... yes, 
but I don't know it. I don't remember it off the top. So now it's all just guts just and in instinct. It's like, yeah. It's like muscle memory it, now. Yes, it is. I always, you, you probably saw, I always start with circle. Even when I did this very first guide, started with a circle in a center line and just kind of making guides to just kind of know where everything goes. Yes, there probably is a rule. I don't remember. I, re I remember, and your eyes are generally one eye width apart. I remember that. But there is definitely a triangular rule where the eyes and the nose and the mouth fit. And I just don't remember it. That's the dogs. It's crazy dog time, just FYI. They this get their crazies they out. I, uh, I love, so we have maple trees near us. And this is actually, we're getting close to sugar season or right where they make the maple syrup, right, Ange? Yeah. And I love maple whirly gigs. I've got leaves still taped to my desk from... Last fall, I keep that stuff around me all year around, and um, and this stuff inspires me. And so things like a John, maple. John Anster Fitzgerald. John Anster Fitzgerald. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Ella Manor Lapointe. Thank you. Lapointe. Yes, big fan of Fitzgerald. Here's what Fitzgerald would do. So here's the thing I love about Fitzgerald Ange. He would do these kind of pedal, and I'm just kind of just drawing abstract shapes. I don't even have any reference here. I'm just kind of kind of playing which is there's some kind of neat. Then he would add all the little, like, the little stamens yeah, and the pollen that. things, like that all these cool. little delicate things to it, which I, I always just loved. Well, because they were things that, like, they, I don't know, it's just stuff that made it seem even more real. Yeah. Those details. I'm thinking that there's, like, an orchid or something that has this kind of crenulated, I don't know. I don't even know if I'll keep it. I'm just kind of playing, to be honest. I don't know. I'm not feeling that. Oh, I like that. That's kind like of like a lion's mane. It is. But also like a, a big rough, you know. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like I'd almost draw this fairy. Like I lit it's it's someone had mentioned the Lady of Pain earlier from Planescape. Like, let's see, her neck would be here, here would be her her chest is Probably about here. Here's her shoulders. Kyle Patterson asks, are you archiving these streams this week? Hi, Kyle. Yeah, I will. I, I very rarely will delete them. I deleted one I did out of the blue about a week or two ago because I didn't realize my – I had the, the phone set higher, and every time my head came in, it did what my hand is doing now, which is knock the drawing out of focus. And I rewatched it, and I was like, it's not even worth keeping. But, yes, I will keep these. And and hi, Kyle. Nice to, Nice to hear from you. So I'm just kind of, I don't even know what her hands are going to be doing yet, but I'm just trying to figure out what her, her general body shape. Maybe she's holding something in her hand. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. And then see, see, I love, I love like a lot of, look at all these X's. They're always thinking about tangents. Uh, yeah, well, I'm always messing up my tangents. Mm, ooh, I like that. Right? That's kind of moth-like. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah, see, I'm like that. Eight. Do the moth. I looked at a lot of moths when we did more than butterflies. Felt like butterflies were the obvious choice for f the spiderweb fairies, so I tended to look at insects lesser lesser viewed. And and the, what I love about m a lot of moths, there's a species called underwing moths, and their their top wings are just like they look like bark. Mm -hmm. It's just mottled gray, and then underneath is like this brilliant orange and red and black banding. And I thought, man, that is so totally like something a fairy would have. So I'm just kind of just, again, no reference right now. I'm pulling off stuff yeah. I know and drawn, and I'm just kind of. I like these kind of longer ears, actually. Yeah, these like maybe these are her ears or whatever, you know. I mean, you see a lot of classic. I mean, you saw I kind of penciled in these ears. I see a lot of these kind of anime elf ears that come out this way. You could do little tiny ears, but I mean, it's always. I'm 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 mentally moving through those and trying something that I wouldn't have. It have come so easily. That happens a lot when, when people draw, design and draw. They tend to redraw things that they it feels good to them because it's familiar even though they may not realize they're just redrawing something that already exists. If that makes sense. Well, I think what's interesting, like I know you have a lot of the like art of the Disney movies and Pixar movies and we were looking at the art of Onward yep. um, yesterday that you got and I think what's really interesting is Ooh, that's nice. in the beginning it's all about finding the shapes and really strong silhouettes yeah. of the characters. 
And so, you know, that's when the character really starts to develop because you're like, what shape is this character? And then once you determine what the shape is, then you're like, oh, and what does this say about them? Yeah. Like, you know, look at her is, you know, the gesture she's going to make with her hand. If you know that she's a very, you know, a high noble character, then that starts to inform kind of the story or, you know, what is it that she's holding? Is it of great I, importance? I was just saying, you know, to make her hold, I, I think it's. Because spring's coming, and they're in our house. I'm thinking oh, yeah, she's holding yeah. a ladybug, Aww. which would be kind of cool and very... So you guys see this. Like, if you watch this back, it, it's, it, we're just, it's just doodling. Now, the other thing that's interesting, it's one thing to do a single static image that's just a pretty picture. If she was a character in a book... You know, I could keep going. I could keep building on this and make her more and more interesting. But if I had to draw her repeatedly, like say like tinsel in the broken ornament, it gets to a point where it's 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 just too much. So a single image like this is really cool. It's really pretty. You hang it on your wall or you look at it in a book. But to make her act and be a character in a story, it's it, she would be problematic, Angie. It would be a little too much to show her yeah. doing all these things. But for the sake of this... Let's keep going. So I think it looks like her, um, I think she's looking down, right? I mean, that was my original line, but I do think the head is slightly tilted down. We're seeing a lot of the top of her head for perspective, which means her eyes are going to be maybe down. They're too down. They're too low. Sometimes I do this, Ange. I just will rub the, dry, the needed eraser very lightly, so it's kept a lot of it, but it just gives me a little bit of a cleaner, a cleaner slate just to kind of find... Like your guidelines. Are My guidelines, there, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get this right. I don't think I am. Yeah, it's not right. I don't like it. Let's go back. Eyes were interesting. You like the downward eyes? Oh, you know what it is? The, the, uh, uh, well, also the, your, your eyebrow. I mean, again, I could have you pose really fast, Ange, and I could look at it, but actually the eyebrows would be lower. They wouldn't be so high because the... Nope. Don't like it. It's not working. I need, I need reference to do it because it's not a pose I would normally draw. Oh, got, I think you got it. Hold on. I can see it. See that? I want you guys I to see it. it. doesn't... Look at when I was down here, when I was up here. Um... I do like this eye. Let me see if I can get one locked in. Now, again, I'm not using reference. I'm drawing it out of my imagination. So this is how this goes. So you guys see me post a big finish, fancy pen drawing, and what you don't see is all this, trying to figure it all out, and the erasing and the redrawing, and the erasing and the redrawing, which is, you know, a big part of these things. That's yeah, not bad. So what, what it is, Ange, is the ear. See, normally we would use, like her ears would be up here to kind of indicate it. Also, if her head was Ooh, I like that. dipped down. I like that. I think the, the shoulders would be higher. And we can put a little bit of a shadow. Now she looks... Pissed. <laughs> she looks angry. Let's try to make her not soften. Soften it. Because the brows were too far down. Well, it wasn't there. It was just they were. If she's going to be compassionate, like showing compassion towards this ladybug. Ah, oh, we might have something. But how many times do I have to erase it, Ange? Three or four times, right? Until I felt like I got it. And again, I'm not with no reference. I mean, I could shoot you for reference, and I'd probably draw it again. Tiny moves. Not a big... Not a lot of big sweeping moves to get that face right. That I do love. Oh, 
Oh, I love the idea of that. All these little stamens are here. The dogs are getting The dogs out. are so happy. They love fairies. Pippin loves to eat them. Oh, yeah. He would chew He would totally chew its wings. You'd find it laying on the ground with its wings chewed off. And he'd be just wagging his tail so happy. Look, I caught this for you. Look at it. We, got, we might have a thing. I now. crunch fairy. Yes. Oh, there's a little bit of that. We might have a thing. It might be a thing. Put some. This is my, like. Put a little life in her, have her blood going through her. Are those her ear? What is that? Ears? Yeah. Their ears? I'm, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> you know, it's more abstract. This is the one thing I do share with Brian Froud that I uh, didn't do consciously, which is w we both kind of scribble and find the forms in the scribble. That's the one thing I do share that he didn't teach me. I think we just both kind of honed in on that same wavelength but you can see like i'm just it's i've just been drawing a lot of shapes and kind of just scribbling to see what what comes out of it and then you know it it's, is. it's choose your own adventure that's it, why i always say yeah it is because i'm thinking of an orchid you can see this very or from nothing. very orchid like but here's the other thing see the other thing too is using this pencil to cut out right see like look at that how that just takes it to a I always remember that. I remember like one of the first days of drawing class, the instructor said, take out your pencil. How many tools are in this? Or how many tools are on here? And everyone was like, one. But in actuality, it's two. And you, it's not you just to erase. Know that there was two? Yeah, but to, the idea of actually <laughs> using it to draw with it, you know what I mean? And, and use it in its own uh, way is also... I mean, you see that? Oh my God! Did you see that? Did you see oh what God. I did? Did you see what I just? Like just, did you see what I just did that? That just she's happened. Pretty. Oh yeah, she's got like a ton of followers. On. She's like a total fairy influencer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Any questions while we're chugging along, Ange? Mm -hmm. What kind of drawing paper do you like to use for warm-up? This is, I can go grab Masks the ream later. Uh, I can go grab the uh, ream later. I literally bought this at Staples. I buy it by the ream. I used it's to sketch, laser. it's just laser. It's like 32 pounds. It's really heavy. It's thick. I like that a lot. So it's, so it, uh, it's acid-free. It's all the things. I used to sketch in sketchbooks all the time. I still bring a sketchbook with me if I'm traveling. But the only reason I stopped is um, I, I just feel like this is more versatile. Um, you know, I, if I wanted to trace her right now, I could flick on the light table, grab a clean sheet of paper, and start tracing like immediately. That way, I couldn't do that with a sketchbook. You know, if I want to flip her over and see all the problems with her, brace yourself. Look at how turned the head is. I didn't even know how to, isn't that crazy to see how turned it is? You don't even realize it. But the features are pretty spot on, just her head's turned. But you, now you realize like this ear would be more, if I kept the head turned, this ear would go more behind the head, right? This ear would, would show more and all this stuff would be cut back a little bit. If I retained that turned head, you can see how off this is. So I often will flip over and work on the back on a drawing. But it's just easier for me than a sketch. But look how off this line is. Like actually the center of her head is here. This should be here. See how off that is? And you just don't see it when you're... That's interesting. I'm saying that it's once you flip it too, it's like that shape behind feels very moth-like. Yeah. In back of there. This or this? The the four like on the left like these yes it is like a it's like a pair of, i was thinking of orchid but it is yeah, totally it was orchidy but then, it is very butterfly in fact yeah. you can almost push it exactly and how cool would that be if that's like that's the rough little swallowtail 
Yeah. That but, seems cooler. But too. like, what if that was rough and it was all that like iridescent? Yes, it's all that iridescent. Cooler. So here it is again. I couldn't do that with a sketchbook. Like, you know, I'd have to yep. tear it out of the sketchbook in order to kind of figure that out. So a sketchbook. There's something less, less precious about just sheets of paper, too. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, I don't like it. Pfft, throw it on a ball, throw it on the garbage. Like, yeah. get rid of it. You know, it's not existing in your sketchbook and you're not ripping a page out. Yeah. You just move on and have all these. You know, I would have to scan this and, and then work from the scan. That's basically what would happen. So, I, What's I like, the one that's like in the center? What is that? This? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Maybe it needs to be more like in the same kind of this kind of this mm -hmm. shape. This kind of, I don't know what that is. Bracket. More pedally. Yeah. So you could, yeah. you could kind of round it and make it more pedally. But it makes me wonder if this could even be, you know, just by spiking that, it just gives it a little edge, right? Because we're not rounding off the corners we're getting mm -hmm. kind of you know what i mean like it's all this little stuff that makes that makes a difference you know like look at that how that makes a difference yes it's getting more interesting so if you're kind of tuning in i'm working on the flip side of a sketch that looked seemed fine to me but then as soon as i flipped it over i saw these errors with it but i'm you know working it out and of course i could fix all this in the computer this would be easy to grab all of her and kind of in Photoshop, kind of just do a little warp and distort, but uh, I like Jenny Holmes on. Hi, Millie. Hey, Jenny. What up? Hope you guys are safe and well. Aaron's ends. Um, Kyle Patterson asks, any favorite inspirational creatures and critters where you guys live? Here in Massachusetts, or in just yeah. in general? Um, I spent years doing macro photography. I mean, I was obsessed. I was. I had a huge macro insect insect photography. photography. So I would take this camera with this lens that's you know bigger than the phone, and I would go lay on the ground and shoot extreme close ups of insects. And I just got to see amazing insects like ambush bugs and scorpion flies and luna moths and things like that that I just never never saw as much of in Florida. But I grew up in Florida, and there's certainly our share of pretty amazing flora and fauna there. The other thing I would add in Florida that is incredibly inspiring to me is obviously the ocean and the coral reefs and, and the life on the sea and, and things like that is also super inspiring to me and had a huge influence on me growing up. Um, so hopefully that 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 uh, helps. Lisa Tuck was asking, how many hours do you draw a day? Uh, um, it really depends, Lisa. If I'm on a deadline, uh, I could spend easily eight to 10 hours down here working. Um, I don't go until I'm exhausted because I end up having to redo the work if yeah, I'm, if if I'm tired. Go, I think if you, if you go past 10, I'm done. a lot of times you'll come upstairs and you'll be like, oh, I screwed that up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I like warming up. Generally, I like warming up in the morning. Um, but if it's a busy day, then sometimes I spend my morning, you know, answering email or you know, taking care of correspondence and things like that. Anyone who's ever written to me knows that I we, we try to respond to every single person who emails or sends a letter. So that usually eats up some time. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. Hi, Amanda Putnam Palmer. Hi, Amanda Putnam Palmer. Um, I hope you're drawing today. Uh, let's see, Laura Hannon says, I adore your work and thank you for sharing. Well, you're very, very welcome. I, you know, this is scary, obviously. I'm sure a lot of people are watching the news and seeing things and braced. And I, and I, I do hope in the end we're, we're, we're overreacting. I, I, I prefer that as opposed to uh, not reacting strongly enough. But the thing that's interesting, Angela, is that in all this, I feel like so many people are reaching out and we're actually connecting. And something like this, it's unfortunate that it takes something like, like the coronavirus to have us all like be at home with our families, and then also connect virtually. That's like, I'm trying to look at the good in all this insanity. Well, you know, we lived, for those of you who don't know, we lived in New York City uh, during 9-11, and I feel like that was... The like worst the, of times and the, the best of times. <laughs> but it was just the beauty of that, too, is you were having meaningful conversations with people and talking to your neighbors and reaching out to people to see if they, you know, need assistance. And, you know, that's when we find out, you know, how strong and resilient we are. And how kind people really are. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, unless they're stealing all the toilet paper, <laughs> unless they're buying all the toilet paper. You, if you're a toilet paper hoarder, tune out right now. <laughs> yeah, really. Your toilet paper holder, just uh, <laughs> come on. There's, there's plenty. There's going to be plenty of toilet paper for everyone. <laughs> and listen, just you know, saw a roll of paper towel in half. <laughs> you got two rolls right there. Yeah. <laughs> um. Let's see. <laughs> Do you prefer to draw at night or during the day? Asks Andrea Benacci. Um. Usually during the day. Well, it depends, Andrea. If it's if it's, uh, it's work, like I'm actually like, I need to do an illustration for a, the current book I'm working on. Like, so for instance, I just finished 70 illustrations for the new Kenny and the Dragon book. That's all happening during the day. I'm not doing that at night because I'd be too tired after a full day. Mm-hmm. And, um, but that doesn't mean I don't get ideas and I'll doodle um, at night and noodle on stuff at night while I'm thinking about it. Um, if I'm on a deadline, though, generally it's a, it's a, it's a regular... Um, you know, it's a, it's a day. Usually after dinner, I may come down and noodle a little bit, but I'm done by the end of the day. I want to spend time with Ange and, and our daughter and, and uh, you know, and kind of shut my brain off a little bit. I mean, work for us is just like, I think very often, I mean, we don't leave it, right? It's always here for us. You yeah. can always walk down to the studio. We can always sit in front of our computer or you can sit at your desk and draw. Yeah. So, you know, I think very often we're just we're trying to find the balance between our home and family life and yeah. work which we love and we want to do yeah um but i mean but, we t- but i feel like we also kind of treat it like a work day you know yeah yeah i will show you my me after we're done because i don't want to have to set the phone back up but i'm like fully dressed as if i was going out i do that almost every day for work i get i take a shower brush my teeth um, I, I, I put on clean clothes, like I dress, going to work. like I'm going to work. I, I need that mental, um, procedure to get me, you know, ready. Otherwise I just, you know, sit on your phone all day and, and my pajamas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, it's, I think a lot of people are at home now, either themselves, um, home from work or home with their kids. Yeah. Um, and I think that is if you're going to be working from home, it's really important. You can choose to not wear pants and no one will know. But, you know, if you think about it as just getting ready to go to work um, and kind of your procedure for the morning and in the way that you would if you were going to your office or, you know, place of employment, you're going to be more productive than if you're just like chilling out in your sweats all day long. That's at least for us. That's what we've found. Yeah, yeah, for us. I mean, I've been doing it for 30 years now and that's... That's what's worked for me. I needed that structure in order to get my day going. Yeah, and it's, we have a routine. Um, you know, Tony and I usually have coffee together in the morning, pretty much every morning, and talk about the day or the week or, you know, things going on in our lives. And just, it's like our morning meeting. It's like how we, you know, sit at the the water cooler and have a conversation about the day starting before we we get going well lately we've been watching 90 day fiance in the morning well yeah i mean that's kind goes of without <laughs> <laughs> um let's see what so look at this if you're just tuning in i've been doing sketches i sketched this fairy which i was you know completely random just kind of drawing abstract shapes and doing stuff and then i did a, the the mirror flip to make corrections and look andrew i've made a bunch of corrections yeah. on it and it's it's stronger agree um, yeah, as I refine it, I'm going to kind of keep... Hi, Gage Menard. <coughs> Greetings to you in Canada. Hey, Gage. Hope you and your brother are doing well. Um, let's see. The hand you draw in the fairy looks like a Disney princess on the hands. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, I mean, it's... Travis Lewis hasn't worn pants in 15 years. Yeah, and see, he's still... Pre- so, like I said, it's, it's too he's productive. It's Yes, this is what's worked for, for me. <laughs> Last, but thankfully, last time we saw you <coughs> at Comic Con, you were wearing pants. So, ooh, is the door? Is that the doorbell? That was the doorbell. Ah. That's and FedEx, I think. I'm gonna go. Uh, they're picking up. Yeah, they're picking up. It's right by the front door. Okay, I'll go get that. And just got FedEx. <coughs> the dogs are letting us know. <coughs> Mimi. It is. You're getting the, the sights and sounds of my studio on a regular.
particular day. Hold on, I'm gonna let the dog out. And we're back. I've been drawing the ferry for a while. Um, let's see. Marin Gelber wants to know, how do I decide how big to draw? Do I have a preferred size? I don't. <laughs> I wish I did. I try to use a consistent size. My rule used to be either I would do 150% or 200% larger than the printed um, size and, um, um, but generally like when I'm sketching like this, I just use eight and a half by 11. It's, it's easy. I have tons of it. Um, if I wanted to, if I was like really feeling, uh, ambitious, so I'm like, oh, I think I want to do a full page drawing. You know, I want to draw her whole body. I would literally grab this. I have scotch tape nearby. I would just tape this and just you know keep going that's how I would that's how I would keep doing this and then figure it out um but I try to be consistent I like 11 by 14 I use 11 by 14 a lot um it really depends on the complexity of the drawing and um how many figures are in the drawing that usually determines the size when I did the the poster for the my exhibition at the Norman Rockwell I used a like a 30 by 40 sheet of paper, which I hadn't drawn on and painted on in a really long time. So it just really depends on a combination of how ambitious I'm feeling and what I'm comfortable uh, drawing on. Like usually it comes down to how small can I draw the face or the head? If it's really tiny, like my fingernail, you know, I mean, I could, you know, it's, it's, it's a little harder to get the details in there. So hopefully that, it, it, there's no tried rule for me, unfortunately. And back after our social visit, um, working at home, we see our FedEx guy pretty regularly, and that was him. There he is. Um, let's see. Chad Thompson says, I've been trying to finish my own children's book for a long time. Okay. Today's been a huge wake-up call. My restaurant job in New York City is gone, and I'm determined to make some magic during these dark days. Thanks for being here today. Oh, well, good luck with your, your writing of your book, and... Um... It is, it is a strange time. There's no question about it. And, and um, you know, even from where we're sitting and, and as people who make books for a living, you know, I, I definitely think who wants to buy kids' books right now? Or, or you know, so I, I think every, it's very uncertain for a lot of us. But if it is something that you have always wanted to do and pursue, uh, then by all means, I think you should, you, should, you should go after it. And I'm sorry to hear that that your job's uh, no longer viable for you. I, I f I'm very fearful that that's going to affect so many people, um, especially small business owners in the coming months. Um, one of the things I would say is when you're writing is, you know, find some people that you trust that you can share your work with. Very important. Um, that you would trust their opinions and their feedback. Yeah. Be open to it, even if you think you're 100% right is just... Yeah. Um, sit Could, with that and and get feedback because that's so helpful. And um, even Tony and I do that. Um, yes. With beta readers, friends, other authors, people that we share our work with um, before it's even seen by an agent, and definitely long before it's seen by an editor. Yeah, I mean, if you're making a book to be consumed by the masses, then you need to test drive it on a group of people to read. Especially kids. Especially. They'll tell you what they think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Eric Bouchard says, books and modules aside, do you have a lot of D&D collectibles? Oh, um, well, that's a very nice, uh, uh, Eric is asking all the right questions. <laughs> I have some D&D collectibles in here that I've gathered over the years. Um, I mean, I, uh, if you've followed me for a while, you know, uh, probably one of the ones I cherish the most are the, the toys that inspired uh, Gary Gygax to create some of his monsters like the owl bear and the rust monster and the boule. Um, I have those. I have, um, 
I'm trying to think. Uh, you know what I was into for a while, Eric, was the uh, – if you go on like Wikipedia, there's articles about this and, and there's even other online resources. Kind of the – what I'm fascinated by as I've gotten older is what Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson and company were using for inspiration to create the world that ended up becoming Dungeons and Dragons. I think the same way with George Lucas and Star Wars or J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter, et cetera. Like what was the raw materials that they were looking at to create these worlds that we love to visit? And so for a while I was collecting a lot of the things that inspired Dungeons and Dragons. So for instance, like A.E. Voigt's um, the, what is it? The Voyager or something? The Voyager. It's a book that was published in 1930s. It's a science fiction book. And it was where Gary got the Displacer Beast from for the Monster Manual. Um, that kind of stuff I love. Like how he, he took all these little bits of pop culture and things that he loved and turned it into this I have to, to interject world. for two seconds. I have to show you a photo. I'll show okay. you guys on the screen. This okay. is my pal Lexi. I don't know if you guys can see this. Look what she's drawing. Oh, she's drawing the mushroom. That's awesome, That's Lexi. That's awesome. I Lexi, love that. keep drawing. drawing. I Those love so yours. Good. Yours is awesome. That is so good. Not only can she make amazing cupcakes, which I saw her do yesterday. Oh, well, that sounds awesome. On her mom's Facebook page. But, wow, she's a great artist, too. So keep drawing, Lexi. Very good. Uh, and there's something to this. Like, I mean, we just doodled, and I feel like there's, like, out of nothing... I feel like there's I could that's actually cool. I could see myself painting this and yeah. coming up with something kind of kind of cool. I don't know what she saw in originally. I thought it was like a ladybug. I it could still be a ladybug. You know like I could I see that. I don't know if it's a... or it's like a ball of light. I mean that's always kind of ambiguous like like what does it mean? I don't What's know. Something that's like super valuable in in the um Well, in I mean honest it'd like... uh, be a seed. Mm -hmm. I mean that's that's a rebirth, that's a rebirth, I mean, let's regrowth. Think about, like, we have yeah you know what is it all what's you know what do we need now more than ever you know and the idea of of a a promise for tomorrow you know it feels to me like the thing so if she was just holding like a seed i think would be kind of interesting i i don't know if the hands are right but you know that i'll i'll do that as a as a note to myself Alien like maybe seeds. Jessica yeah some, Hallie said do drop caitlin yeah. pitt said acorn yeah, I thought about an acorn too. Gage said firefly. Yeah. Yeah, could be a firefly. Hmm. Anyway, I think this one's I, I feel good enough at this point to let this one So what would do, now finish okay, let's up. say you were gonna take that to to next level, what would you do? Uh next level after this, it depends on what how I was gonna finish the final render was it going to be one of my pen and ink doodles like i post every day uh, you know i might get a little reference for the hands like and it would be more painted right if i was going to paint it i would probably have you or sophia pose and take a couple quick photographs with the phone just to make sure i've got everything uh you know i can only do so much out of my head and then at a certain point i need to get actual reference, reference yeah or whatever if, the wings or yeah i would gather reference face. for her for her um for the wings i feel these We're are kind of maple well here's the thing or... yeah right or or you know it's 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 butterfly wings but then they're skinned in orchid patterns or it's orchid petals skinned in butterfly patterns you know what i mean like that's always like kind of my thing of like it's i'm drawing one thing but i'm skinning it in something else i don't know and I'm still not sure I like all these I know. flanges now. I feel like there's... No, see, I like those. Maybe there's too many. Maybe, like, maybe I need to get rid of and just have the... Like, it's just a little nub. So that might, that I feel feels like better. these would have gotten turned. Because you got up, 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 and then here. These like, downs? Like, those have gotten... I mean, that's kind of cool. Like, those are her antenna. I don't know. There's something. There's something there. Sometimes, and also walk away from it and come back, and and that happens a lot. You know, it is kind of like the what you see in the movie, or or the like the, the like the artist walks, stands back, and looks at it, and you know, rub your chin and thought. You're thinking about mentally, like what? Well, what if I move this or change this or add this? 
I know I'm not mentioning everybody's comments, but people are writing such nice things about your art and how much you love it and thanking you for sharing it. So thank oh, you guys for thank, watching. Thank you guys for watching. It's been, it's been my pleasure. I, w I would be doing this anyway, and it's awesome to be able to share it and to connect with everyone. And, um, you know, I think we need that now more than ever to feel like we're all in this together and we're all going through this and experiencing this. It's no, no longer a regional thing or a, or a country thing. It's all over the world and it's scary. Um, but I am absolutely amazed of how it's connecting a lot of us. And, uh, like I said, I feel like we need that now more than ever. All right, I'm done. I'm done with this. I, I feel like at this, I'm at a point where I'm like, I I don't know which. I'd either start a final drawing or okay. or something else. Let's maybe do one more uh, request before we uh, call it a day. Let's see. I'm just noodling on it. Do you have that one piece? I'm going to show them that one piece of artwork that I really love that you did, that pen and ink. I don't know if it's here in the flat file, though. What was it? It was the one of the kind of aquatic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gee, Sanchez, I'm not sure where that is. I'd have to dig around for it. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, maybe That's... in boxes? Yeah, maybe ish. Just thinking of that because she kind of has the same vibe. Yeah, she's kind of similar. Vibe. Well, you know what you could grab is on the bookshelf where all my books are. Mm -hmm. There's the cover of the album per Sheezy. Yeah. It's on the cover of that. Yeah, so they could see how this would kind of. So keep going straight ahead and then to the right, and then right in there. Yep, oh, down one. Right in there, you'll see it. The little kind of tan colored spine. It'll be in there. And there's a piece I drew, golly, five, six years ago that Ange loves, and I've still never finished it. <laughs> it's still only a sketch. It's a sketch like this. I just never got much further. I think I inked it, and that was about it. Sometimes what I do is I'll add another sheet of paper nearby and then just kind of figure out um, what the rest of it is. So let me just jot it really quick. So, so sometimes I'll do this and like, I've even gone and like drawn the body and then I'll Photoshop, in Photoshop, I'll cut this head out and place it on a separate body. So just kind of, you know, what's the, what's the overall shape look like? But I do love this big crown, this kind of flower crown. And I feel like I wouldn't, it feels like that almost like, That's her head. These are the petals. And then kind of just figuring out what the rest of her. I almost wonder if the arms are long. Oh, here it is. That's kind of interesting, too. Instead of so human, just maybe more longer arms. Kind of started in a similar way. Yeah, this is one of Ange's favorite pieces. So this is uh, Undyne. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is like looking at all the stuff I grew up seeing in Florida, snorkeling and, and scuba diving and sand dollars and tentacles. This is purposely very symmetrical. You can see it in the eyes and the face, Ange. I did it very symmetrical. Mm -hmm. I love it. And then started playing with it, just pushing it out. And I, this is as far as I got. It was meant to be a painting. And then I, <laughs> I got this far and was... You know, got went on to something else and never finished it, but I should finish it. Yeah, it's so good. I'd either paint it or I almost could see it. Um, this is, you could tell I did this right around the time I was working on Wandla because it's got that very technical pen mm -hmm. look. You can almost do the colors flat, like a like a t-shirt kind of thing. Oh, but I want a painting of it. You want a painting? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to do all the elements. I was going to do water, air, earth, and uh, fire, and this is as far as I got. <laughs> Angel, hello. Let's see. Any other requests? 
Ah, Jay Peterson says Lightbox is one of his best drawing tools. Oh, not is that? Wait, you mean this like the light table? The light table. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Totally with you. Mm -hmm. well, are you gonna go live tomorrow? I think we should. Don't you guys think we should? I think, so. I think we could go live tomorrow. Maybe we'll ink. I mean, I'm open. If you guys want to, like, I could do art show and tell. We could we go into the flat files. Um, I could do a studio tour. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the phone off this thing here. First of all, we talked about. Um... There I am. See, I got all clean, like I'm going to work, all dressed and clean, like I'm like I'm going to work. Uh, I am David. I am thinking about going live all week. That's totally. You're reading. You're reading my mind. I mean, we could, we could do a tour of the studio. We could we could plunge into the flat files, um, if you guys want to do that. We could um, look at other art that I've collected. Angie and I have collected art from tons of uh, you know other would, illustrators. You know what would be fun to do would be to hit the bookshelf and maybe your top kind of list of hi, <laughs> um, books that you recommend for aspiring artists. Or, yeah, I mean, we know. could totally... Because you have those books that you return to over and over. I really do. I was even thinking today, like, books I bought just the mo most recently. But, yeah, the bookshelves, I could definitely go in. I love talking about other people's art more than myself. <laughs> so we could definitely do that maybe tomorrow, Ange. We could just do, a, like, a tour of the studio and... and you uh, could do a thing where you maybe take a drawing and then move it to dig the digital stage could yeah we could cool. definitely do that we could we, you know like i said we've collected art so we could even do a virtual we talked about brian frow there's a original by brian that i bought years ago and uh here's a harry roundtree who's a big big influence so uh Ange thinks it's a good idea <laughs> sophia's not in her hut this is what our kid did um oh i'm gonna home. give you a tour hold on this is called the bubble hut just yes, so you guys a, know it's on, been there's a, there's a flag in case you don't. this has been a work in progress so by the way is I don't want to ruin the flag, but yes, this is the bubble hut We should do a Facebook Live inside. In, the li we're live from the bubble hut, and then she's got stuff set up inside of the bubble hut. <laughs> And this is where, you know, she's working sometimes. She's got a window cut in here. Crafting it out. Yes. And then when we're killing time and we're hanging out at the Pac-Man machine, which we haven't played in a little while. No. But we did play some pa Captain Fantastic. The, and, um... There's my giant head. <laughs> and you should show them... I know people have asked this. The, um, like the setup I use. Like how it's all set up. Lots of flat files. So you guys can see. Um, he's got flat files here. They're all labeled with what is inside of each of them. Yeah. And then he's got a set of flat files, a few sets of flat files over here that contain original art. Yeah. Each one of them is a book or a project. D&D Planescape. Semi-chronological. But yeah, if you open it up, there are the sketches and the artwork for it. We can do that one day. Um, but before we go, Ange, I think we should just show them what your, what Tony's setup looks like. Yeah. I've had a couple people ask about that, like how I, how I do it. So this, we go got for a it. lot of lights. So you can see there's a, a lot of light on and, um, this was the rig I used for the phone and keep it plugged in. And this is where he was just drawing. And then usually when he's on a project, this bulletin board is filled with the project that he's on it yep. usually has each spread or sketches and as he completes the final art that each sketch is based on he takes it off the board yeah. and before you know it he's got an uh, empty bulletin board like right now yeah. except for this amazing drawing our daughter did of you know who so well that's it for today this let's, is it let's do it again tomorrow uh thank you guys for tuning in be safe be healthy. We're thinking of you, and we thank you for uh, uh, coming by. And let's do it again tomorrow. I would love to do it. Let's do it all week. And we're going to post this um, to your Facebook page. Yeah, I'll save. I'll archive all of these. Yep, so, so you'll be able to see it if you missed it. So thanks, thanks for, for tuning in, guys. Bye. Bye.